and welcome to Freedom Church. We are so excited that you decided to join your Firestarter today. My name is Yasmina. And my name is Luke. And if it's your first time connecting in today, we are excited that you are here, that you took that bold step to connect in to one of our Firestarter communities. Mm. Guys, we have an amazing event lined up for you. So sit back, relax, enjoy today's event. It's going to be awesome. And actually today we've got something a bit more unique happening. Ooh. We call it an in-house event, but it's kind of ironic because most of you are pretty much in houses already but it basically means that today's message is tailored specifically to you guys as fire starters in, in your homes all around the world so we have an incredible word coming yeah. from our very own karen cook it's gonna be awesome so we've got that coming up amazing absolutely and we actually want to take this opportunity in our in-house event to maybe tell you a little bit more about what a fire starter really is oh. and how it got started because you might be quite new to this environment and we don't want to always assume that you know what we are talking about but a fire starter like the word says it's all about starting a fire now if you think about a fire um, it can seem like a big overwhelming thing but it often really starts with something small like a spark or even a match mm. being being lit but the impact of something small when that fire spreads is just incredible and that's what we believe for our fire starters all around the world oh. is that it might start start small but the impact that it has is incredible and that fire that we are trying to start that fire that we talk about is all about that relationship that we have with Jesus so good. It's all oh. about the gospel it's all about connecting anyone anywhere all the people around us in to that life-changing relationship so that's good. what we're Mom. also passionate about Come that's on. what we are trying to build is, is communities of faith um, and where we help each other where we walk a journey with each other and with Jesus so that's what what we're doing come on so so good and fire starters we are cheering you on Absolutely. in all your locations we're so excited yeah. about what you're doing and about what God's doing in your cities all around the world so so great guys we're gonna go into a time of worship now this is basically a time for us to sing a couple of songs declaring God's goodness declaring his promises declaring so who he is and how amazing he is and all the good stuff he's done for us and just giving him honor praising him worshiping him with our voice with our hands so we're gonna take a time now so I want to encourage you to get some space around you get That's passionate good. and let's go to a time of worship come on church let's call out the name of our God
So hello, fire starters. It is so good. I haven't been speaking to you for a while and I couldn't wait to speak to you today. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Karen. I'm married to Chris and Chris and I oversee the fire starters globally. And it's amazing how many fire starters we've got now right across the world. America, Europe, Africa. It's phenomenal. I love you guys and I wish I was in every living room with you right now being able to chat but it's so good to connect with you here on screen. I want to talk to you today about something that I'm really passionate about and that is about Jesus. Honestly guys, I love Jesus so much. Honestly, he has changed my life forever. He truly has, and I might cry at some point in this message because he has been so generous with his love, with his grace, with his faithfulness in my life and the life of my family. It is amazing. And obviously, if you want a title, we are going to flow in line with the, the series that we've been in, which is Open Hands. But today I want to talk about open hearts equals open hands. Our hands are open in generosity when our hearts are open. And I want us today to really go on a journey of examining our hearts, my heart, your heart. Because the thing is, when our hearts close up, then that does something inside. It isolates us. It makes us less generous. It makes us less loving. And so today, today I want our hearts to be opened. There's a scripture in Luke 6, verse 45, and it says this. A good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. So what is stored up in your heart today? Do you know what? There's been so many times in my life where circumstances have affected the condition of my heart and as a result have affected the giving of my hands. You know, there's been times in my life, I remember when Chris and I have been through times of debt and you're really struggling and you're not really sure how that bill is going to be paid at the end of the month. And you look at your bank account and the bills are mounting up and the debt is mounting up. And what you do as a result is you close down you close down in, in yourself, you close down in your heart, and as a result, you close down in your generosity. Now, I'm not saying to be foolish. I'm not saying that when you're in debt that you give, 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 but I am saying that we need to give, give, give maybe of our time. It doesn't need to be our money in those times. There always needs to be that ability to give no matter what, but it comes out to that heart. There have been times in my life where I've had bereavements. I remember when my dad died and it was such a painful time. He was so young and I had three young children. And at that time, I remember closing in. I remember times in the other family members who've become sick. And there are those times where people are ill or you're ill and you want to come back. You want to withdraw from life. And do you know what? There's this famous saying, isn't there? When life throws you lemons, make lemonade. Well, I got someone else to tell you today. When life throws lemons at you, extract the pips, plant the pips, grow more lemons and sell them to the lemonade factory. Do you know what? In times of difficulty, sometimes we need to consider what we're doing with when life throws at us. Are we still thinking multiply? Are we still thinking generosity? To be honest with you, there are times when life throws me lemons that I just want to squeeze the lemon juice in someone's eye because they've upset me and they've hurt me. That's real talk right there. So when we're feeling low, when we're feeling discouraged or anxious, there's a tendency for us to become less generous. When we're feeling content and at peace, that peace that protects our hearts, that protects our minds, that tells us it's going to be okay, we become more open, we become more generous. 
When we're actually hurt or offended by someone, we shut down, we close down. That hurt or that offense maybe closes us down emotionally or even spiritually because you haven't dealt with that unforgiveness. But when forgiveness comes, you become open again, more generous again with your time, with who you are. And when we've sinned and when we've done something wrong, or maybe right here, right now, you know that you've done something wrong or you're in the process of doing something wrong. You tend to shut yourself away from other people or you tend to live in silence or in secret and you withdraw. So what I wanna ask you right now is where are you at? Where is the condition of your heart at right in this moment? When you're listening to this message, wherever you're listening to from, where's your heart at? So I don't do this often in the middle of a preach, but I'm gonna take a moment's silence. And wherever you're sitting, I want you right now to close your eyes. And if there's music going on in the background, can you just switch it off? Because we're gonna examine our hearts right now. And we're gonna ask the Holy Spirit right now to reveal the condition of our hearts. Maybe you need to ask yourself, are you in pain for someone else? Maybe you need to ask yourself, are you hurt? Are you offended? Are you anxious? Are you worried? So we literally now on screen are gonna take a moment and I want you to close your eyes and spend a moment with God, ask him to reveal to you what's going on in your heart. There's a scripture in Matthew 16, verse 26, and it says this. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? You see, Jesus asked this question. In Matthew, he's talking to his disciples and the people and he's saying, what will it be if you've got everything in life? And for someone who gains everything and yet they forfeit their soul, because that's what we've been talking about, the heart condition, the soul condition. And you know what? When Jesus asks us a question, we need to be ready to answer. He's asking a question here. And I believe that what God is trying to say is, what's the condition of your soul? Where are you at in life? Because the thing is, you can have all of the wealth in the world and still be so unhappy, so cold, so closed off to others. But the thing is, you see, for me, the foundation of everything in life is the gift of giving. God gave. He was so generous. He's given us so much. I could list and keep on listing here to eternity the gifts that God has given. He's given you individual gifts. He's given you the gift of creation. He's given you the gift of family or church or friendships. He's given you spiritual gifts. He might have given you the gift of leadership. He's given so much. But ultimately, he gave us his life. And this is where I get emotional. Oh! He gave his life. 
He hung on that cross for everyone whose hearts are cold and hard and distant and sinful. He didn't wait for you to get right to show you the love that he has for you, to give you that gift of life. You see, the thing is, the enemy will want to come and steal and kill and destroy your life. And he comes in so many different ways and so many circumstances. But the promise in the Bible is that Jesus has come to give you life in all its fullness. He wants you to go away today with a heart that is forgiven, a heart that is saved, a heart that is full of life. And out of that fullness of life, you will not be able to do anything other than give to others. That generosity of what God has given you will pour out exponentially all across the different people that you come in touch with. So God wants to open up our hearts today. He wants to do a little bit of heart surgery. He wants to open up your voice today. And he wants to give you, give you, give you everything that your heart desires. So we're going to look at four different areas of generosity And as we go through these four different areas of generosity, I want you to consider what two are you going to action and apply? Because the thing is, we can listen to messages all the time, but unless they make a difference in our lives and the lives of others, it's just words. So I want you to consider today, what is it that you need to apply at the end of this message? So I'm going to pray. And I'm going to pray for a release of generosity to every one of you fire starters, to everyone listening, a release of the gift of giving into your heart. So Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, as we go through these different areas of generosity that I know you want to increase in our lives, God, I pray that that revelation from heaven will download into the hearts and minds of people watching right now and Lord that we will apply and make a difference to the world around us. The first generosity I want to talk about is the generosity of our judgments. That's a different one to start off with but there is so much of a great need in society at the moment for a generosity of the judgments that we make on others. When we live in a culture that cancels, when we live in a culture that criticizes, when we live in a culture where we can get easily offended, we as Christians need to take the opposite approach. We need to take the higher ground. I have to say, that when somebody hurts me and offends me, I don't always take the higher ground. I have to, hands up here, sometimes my pre-Christian life kicks in and I just want to go and punch them. But that's not what God asks of us, people. And so instead, what I'm going to ask is that today you consider how generous are you with your thoughts and your judgments of others. See, the spirit of generosity of our thoughts allows us not to harbor offense. It allows us not to be negative. It allows us not to remain in disagreements because we are meant to love and not to hate. We are meant to forgive and not to harbor bitterness. We are meant to go on a journey of seeing someone heal and not point the finger at them. So today, maybe one of your heart considerations is if you are holding offense, if you are hurt, if you are upset, if you're in pain, if you're in sin, then it's about going back to Jesus saying, clean up my heart. Because when you clean up my heart, I know that my heart will allow my hands to be more generous. Number two, the generosity of our actions Throughout the Bible, some of the most beautiful scriptures are about when others love others. Jesus is love. But when we show acts of great hospitality, do you know, there's a couple, when I was preparing this message, there was a couple that came to mind in the act of 
generosity of actions. And it's a couple in our Hereford location called Richard and Ray Asgar Sands. They have been in our church 20 years. And all of the time that I have known that couple, their home has always been open. When somebody needed a shelter, they would provide it. When somebody needed to stay for longer than a year, they would provide a room. When I know, and I've seen it on Facebook, when there is a meal train that is being asked for, Ray is one of the first to offer meals. She invites people around her dinner table all the time. They seek no reward, but boy, their reward in heaven is going to be exceptional because their hearts are so generous in their actions. So a question for you. You know when somebody puts something on Facebook, can I have a lift to the airport? Or can you help me with moving house? Or can you provide a meal train? Are you ones that jump on immediately and say, yes, I want to do that? Or is it, oh, I'm sure someone else will reply, I'll just wait a few hours and then I'm sure it will be covered. Are you in your head saying, I'm too busy? I don't have the capacity. I don't have the energy. Because you see, the thing is, here in the UK, 98% of people hate church. Why? Because they came. And it's so sad that people right across this country, and I believe in Europe as well, have come to a church and they found closed hearts and they found closed hands, and they found pointing fingers, not hearts that are open, not hearts that are willing and saying, come to my house for dinner, come and spend time with me, come and be my friend. And so what are your actions today? Is there something about you, the generosity of your actions that God wants to work with? Number three, generosity of gifts. And this is more than money. It is money because I believe that there are some people listening here today and even on back of some of the other messages in this series, God is yet again coming to you and saying, I think there's a giving, there's more giving. I think you could increase your giving, increase your offering. I think God is challenging some hearts to increase their tithe. I know of one couple in our church that have a vision to do reverse tithing, which means they want to give away 90% and keep 10. Whoa, how incredible is that? Is there anyone else listening to this that says, gosh, I'd love to do that. That you had enough money to be able to bless those around you that actually you only needed to keep 10% of what you earned. That is a blessing from God in order for you to bless others. But yeah, it could be generous with our time. It could be generous with um, gifts that God has given us. Let me take you on an example. Going back a number of years ago, Chris and I built a house. And we love our house. And we're still in our house. But two years after we built the house, and we had worked hard, we had done a lot of graft, we had painted it, we had helped to build it, we were doing a lot, a lot of work in that house and I loved it. And then two years later, the request came for us to move. We were asked to be pastors in Cardiff and I am literally sitting in my house one day going, God, no, I don't want to give up my house. And that still small voice that comes so encouragingly that says, but it's not your house really, is it, Karen? I'm like, well, it is, I think. And the process of thinking that I went on then, that God gave me the house. And you say, well, no, he wouldn't because you got the house. No, 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 no. He gave me that house because he gave me the money to buy the house. And he gave me the job to get the money to buy the house. And he gave me the qualifications to get the job to get the money to buy the house. And he gave me the ability in my mind to get the qualifications to get the job to buy the house. Do you get my point? That anything that God gives to you is on loan. It's not ours to hold. It's not ours to keep. 
He lends us things to look after for him. So when it was, okay, God, someone else can live in my house, it, it, I mean, it was painful to start with. But we got to the place where we just said, yeah, we just want to follow you. And God blessed us with so much more. So what is it? What do you have in your hands? Is it money? Is it your car? Is it your home? Or is there something in your possession that you're holding tightly onto that God says, I want you to sell that and I want you to give that away. Or if you sell it, you give the money to something or someone. I think there's a challenge there for someone listening today that you've got something valuable in your home and God's prompting you to sell it. So then finally, the generosity of our testimony. Oh my gosh, I love giving my story. Wherever I can, whenever I can, I'm saying, you need to hear my story. We started this whole message about Jesus. This is all about Jesus. When did you last give, give the gift of your story that resulted in the gift of salvation to someone? Why do we keep our stories of Jesus so tightly to us? When what God is says is share the good news. Share your testimony. And so the generosity of you giving your story. And I think today there are many of you watching, many of you listen. And this challenged me too when I was preparing this. God was saying, when was the last time you gave your story to see someone else find salvation and a changed life? Some of you have sat on your story for too long. You need to go out this week. You need to intentionally ask the Holy Spirit, who am I going to share my story with this week? The generosity of time over a coffee with your story. So as we finish up today, in your life right now, where is God asking you to be more generous? Is it more generous with your judgments, your gifts, those actions that he's asking us to take, or your testimony? Because I want you to go away from here today. And as I said right at the beginning, I want you to apply this word. And I want you to take it, action, this week, next week. Choose two areas that I've mentioned. Don't need to do all the four, but just take two and apply it. And I guarantee that your life and the lives of people around you will absolutely change as a result. Kindness and generosity is far more powerful than we think. Let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for your gift of life. Lord, and if there is anyone listening to this today that doesn't know you, that doesn't know life in all its fullness, that doesn't know how they can be forgiven for their past, that don't know how they're going to even take the next step on this life that they've been given because circumstances are so tough. But today, Jesus, you're reaching out your hands. You're saying to people right across the world today, come to me because I want to give you life in all of its fullness. And so if that's you right now, I just want you in your hearts to just pray this prayer after me. Dear Jesus, I am so sorry for where my life has been at. I'm so sorry for the actions I've taken, for the decisions I've made. And God, I want to say I'm sorry. And today I want to say, Lord, be Lord of my life. I give you my life and I want you to lead me. In Jesus' name, amen. And for everyone else listening, Lord, I pray that they will go away today and apply and action some of what's been shared in order to open their hearts and as a result, open the hearts and the minds of others around them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for listening. Have the best week.
Thank you so much for that incredible word, Karen. So, so powerful. Guys, that's it for our event today. We're gonna about to transition over to your Firestarter leaders and to your locations all around the world just now. But next week, we have something lined up for you that oh. is incredible. Yeah, we are starting a brand new series next week and it's called Being Human. And I know it's going to be incredible. So make sure you are there. Make sure you don't miss any part of it. So Come see on. you then. Thank you.